November, 1854. Kirsten Larson and her family have been in Minnesota for four months. The harvest season has come and gone. Which means the fall school term is about to begin. You're walking too fast, Mr. Mr. Putin will be angry if we're late. Be really strict. Wait for me. I want to stop for a drink of water. Look, 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 look. Sigh. I wish I could stay here instead of going to school. If you mind him, Mr. Putin will like you. But he gets really angry when the big boys fight. In Sweden, the boys weren't allowed to fight in school. Well, this is America, and here the boys get wild, whether they should or not. Sometimes Mr. Putin hits them with a cane. Once he punched Amos Anderson with his fist. If you talk back to Mr. Putin, he swaps your hand with his ruler. He's mean. But he never hit you, Kirsten. You're too nice. Don't worry. Sorry. I'm not really worried. But I'm dizzy. Does your stomach hurt? I'm scared. My stomach hurts and flutters like there's a bird inside me. Yes, my stomach hurts a little. I was really scared the first day I went to school, too. I wonder if the others would like me. It's hard to be the new girl. Just do what we do, Kirsten, and you'll get along fine in school. But I can't do what you do. I only speak a little bit of English, and I can't read a word of it. I won't fit in at all. School only lasts until 4 o'clock. When it's over, we can stop at our court and play for a few minutes. Come on. I hear the school bell. We have a new teacher. <coughs> I'm Miss Winston. I've come west from Camden, Maine. I'm to be your teacher, because Mr. Coupon was injured when his horse threw him. Because he is not included in American Girl's premiere, the part of Amos Anderson will be played by a cat prop voiced by Commodore Sam. I hope his horse gets on him, too. That's Amos Anderson. You will not talk out of turn in my classroom. Although we live in the woods, we are not savages like the Indians. Oh, you know my name, but I don't know yours. I'd like each of you to come forward and introduce yourself to me politely. We are ladies and gentlemen here at Powder Keg School. Ladies first. Anna Larson, ma'am. Very good. Next, please. Kirsten Larson. Say Kirsten Larson, ma'am. Ma'am. <laughs> Do you speak English? A little, ma'am. She's our cousin, Miss Winston. She came to America last summer. We speak Swedish at home, ma'am. Ah. Well, you will speak English in school, Kirsten. And you will begin with the easiest lessons. Anna will share her book with you and help you. Do you understand? Say, I understand, ma'am. If you're going to learn English, you must practice. Practice makes perfect. <laughs> you may be seated, Kirsten. <gasps> My father could not be a ship's captain if he weren't in charge of his crew. I couldn't be a teacher if I weren't in charge of my students. This is your first lesson Miss Winston hit the stove. 
Miss Winston is the subject of that sentence. Hit is the verb. The direct object of hit is the stove. Be careful that the direct object of hit isn't the student. Do you have any questions? Good. Now, you boys please come and introduce yourselves. Remember, you are gentlemen, not savages. Sigh. I wish I were home. In Sweden or with Mama. I don't care which. D. God, doesn't this dog look just like our brownie when he smells a fox? <coughs> See, here are the letters that spell dog. Copy them on your slate like I do. <coughs> it seems Anna is a good teacher. Can you read what you've written there, dog? <laughs> you must learn to write the dog can run, as Anna has done. It is not <laughs> enough to just know a word. You have to know how to use it. Ah, I love school, don't you? Sigh. It's still early in the morning. This is going to be a long day. Editor's note. Because there are no dolls in Kirsten's prop set, the part of the girl's rag dolls will be played by slate bags. Anyway, when school was over, Kirsten and her cousins went to play in their fort. Hello, children. Come introduce yourselves like ladies. Kirsten, do you think Miss Winston is nice? I don't know. She likes you, Anna. I don't think she likes me. And remember how she scolded. Yes, she was fierce. Is that what Mr. Coupon was like? No, he was much worse. Let's play school. Let's pretend it's lunchtime. That was the only good part of the day. You don't need to know English to play tree tag. Here's your lunch, children. One mud cake each. No, no, children. Don't eat so fast. Remember you are not savages like the Indians. You sound just like Miss Winston. But what does savage mean? Savage means wild. Are the Indians really savage? Some people say the Indians are kind. They say the Indians gave them beer meat and corn when they needed food. But other people say the Indians are cruel and bloodthirsty. An Indian came to our door once when Mama was roasting pork. Mama gave him a piece of meat and he went away. He didn't hurt us, but he didn't say thank you, either. He looked savage. He had red paint on his cheeks and eagle feathers in his hair. He didn't wear trousers. And we didn't hear him coming. We looked up and suddenly he was in the doorway. That's Indian magic. That's not magic, Anna. They wear soft shoes, that's all. They wear long knives, too. And they live in tents. Papa worries about the Indians. He says that, if we plant crops on their hunting land the wild animals will go away. He says the Indians won't have enough to eat them, and they'll surely be angry. I don't know. Papa says we need the land, too. Do the Indians live in their tents all winter? Don't they get cold? I don't know. You're too curious, Kirsten. Let's just play school. Class, I have good news for you today. We are going to do something special in Powder Keg School this year. Each one of you will learn a poem. When you've memorized it, you will stand here by the stove and recite it to your classmate. If you do an excellent job, you learn a reward of merit. Oh, this is just too much. How am I going to remember a whole poem? And how can I stand there and say it out loud? 
Everyone will make fun of me. Just saying your poem is not enough, of course. You must speak with feeling. If your poem expresses anger, you must do this. If your poem expresses love, you must do this. There are many feelings to express. This is excellent training for your young minds, believe me. Here's a good one, for you, Kirsten. It's not too long, and it will give you a chance to show both anger and love. You're a lucky girl. Quick, Anna, read it to me. Who, who, says the gentle dove. Who, who, says its little mate. They play with each other in love, and never show anger or hate. Oh no, how am I ever going to learn all of those words? I wish I could just disappear. The next morning, Kirsten's mother sent her down to the stream to fetch a bucket of water. Oh, a deer. I wait for him to finish drinking. HMM? Oh, there's an Indian girl on the other side of the stream. Hello. My voice must have scared the deer away. She left the blue bee deer. I know it looks like a mug, but my prop set is super limited. I wonder if she was sent here to get water too. I want to meet her. But how? Oh, I know. Come back, she will see this doll cake and know that I left it here. That evening, when Kirsten returned to the stream, the doll cake was gone, and a green duck feather had been left in its place. For several days, she continued leaving little gifts by the stream every morning. And every evening, they would be replaced with a gift from the Indian girl. But she never saw her. At school, she would daydream about running through the prairie with her secret friend. She wouldn't need to learn English to do that. Finally, one evening, Kirsten took some leftover bread and honey from her supper, sat it on the other side of the stream, and waited. Today is the day. I'm going to meet her, no matter what. Oh, but the sun is almost down. I'm not allowed to be away from the cabin after sunset. Mama will worry if I'm gone too long. Oh, please come. H -L -L. It's a tiny clay pot with markings drawn into it. It's pretty. The girl reached up and stroked Kirsten's braids. <laughs> pretty. The phone is pretty. Kirsten pointed to the girl's beaded necklace. Pretty. Pretty. Tea. Fur. Tea. For several days after, Kirsten and the girl continued to meet by the stream. Singing Bird. Your name is Singing Bird. Yes. It's pretty.
Some time later, when Kirsten was walking to school with her cousins, she received some terrible news. Miss Winston's coming to live at our house. Oh no. It's an honor, Kirsten. We've never had a teacher live with us. But we didn't want Mr. Putin. Won't it be grand? Miss Winston will eat supper with us every night. She'll have a bed up in the loft me hours. Papa hung up a curtain to make her her little room. Miss Winston's been living in a shed off the end of the kitchen, but now the shed is too cold. She says our house will be wonderful. She heard our mama is a good cook. Well, there's no room for her in our cabin. Anyway, my mama doesn't speak English at all. But that's the best part. You and your family will eat with us more often. Your mama will cook with mine, and we'll all have supper together. That way your mama and papa can learn more English. Papa says that with Miss Winston at the table, it won't be polite to speak Swedish. But the happiest time for our family is when we talk about our day over supper. How can we do that if we struggle with English? When is she coming? Next Sunday five nights from now. Just think, she dress right in our room. I bet she has beautiful petticoats. She's a lady, you know. Ladies wear beautiful underclothes, I'm sure of it. I didn't add those lines. They're in the book. What the hell? Anna, I don't care what kind of underclothes Miss Winston wears. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. You're probably cross, because you had such a hard time remembering your poem. Come on. We can talk about this later. That afternoon, Kirsten decided to show Singing Bird the secret fort. <laughs> Thirty. Singing Bird built a structure out of twigs and an oak leaf. Pee pee. Come. Kirsten walked two of her fingers into an opening in the little pee pee. Here I am. No. My pee pee. Oh, she wants me to come to her village. Yes, I'll come. I don't believe you're really trying. Why can't you learn your poem? I'm trying, ma'am. Please look at me when I speak to you. Can you read the words of your poem? I can read the words, but I can't remember them. Your cousin Lisbeth recited all 32 lines up to a water bowl. I'm only asking you to memorize a few lines. Your memory is like a muscle, Kirsten. You must use it to make it strong. Every time I try to say the poem without looking at the book, the words seem to disappear. Everyone can memorize and recite, except me. Even Amos Anderson recited a whole poem. The roses are red, violets are blue, I pooped in my water bucket, you are welcome. You must try harder. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. Even if I could memorize it, I would surely forget it when I stand up in front of the class. And worst of all, I might cry in front of everyone. Two days, after they agreed to go to her village, Kirsten got up early to finish her chores before rushing off to meet Singing Bird. Kirsten! 
Come. Come to my father. The part of Brave Elk will also be played by a cat prop voiced by Commodore Sam. I am Brave Elk. How do you do? You are Singing Bird's friend. Yes. Singing Bird is my friend, too. You teach your English words to Singing Bird. My English words? He is right. I hadn't once thought of trying to speak Swedish with her. Singing Bird teaches me, too. TP. Moccasin. Good. You are yellow hair. You are welcome here. You stay. For the rest of the morning, Singing Bird showed Kirsten her prized possessions, including a bone sewing needle and a doll made of buckskin and grass. Kirsten wished she could live in the warm tent with Singing Bird. Instead of Kirsten Larson, who couldn't memorize her poem, she would be Yellow Hair, Singing Bird's sister. I'm sure you would love to see all of this animated. But that would have required more effort on the developer's part. A few days later, on Sunday night, Miss Winston's first meal with the Larsons arrived. My parents have a lovely home on a harbor in Maine. There's a small room on the top. It has windows on all four sides. When my father is at sea, we watch for his ship from that room. What a fine room that must be! Why did you want to leave such a lovely home? Well, I certainly wasn't ready to marry and spend the rest of my life in a house. I wanted to travel, to meet people, to have adventures. School teachers travel, so I decided to become a teacher. Maybe you will be a teacher when you grow up, Anna. You've been a good little teacher for Kirsten. Oh, I hope my parents don't say anything about the poem. Miss Winston would tell them I haven't memorized it. Does your father sail on his ship every day? No, Anna, he isn't a fisherman. He has a big ship for carrying heavy cargo. He sails down the coast with a load of wool. Then he sails back with a load of tobacco. I might want to be a sailor. Life is exciting on a ship. Would you like to see my father's ship? Cha. I mean, yes, ma'am. Then after our meal, I'll show you a surprise. Eat, Anna. You'll get thin if you don't pay attention to your dinner. The ship in this bottle looks just like my father's. Yes. It looks just like the eagle, too. The ship we sailed on to America looked just like this one. It was called the Eagle. We sailed for ten weeks. There were terrible storms. Everyone was sick. Six people died on the ship, and the sailors buried them at sea. Oh my. I can't believe I just said all of that in English. You remember the ship clearly, don't you? Oh, yes. My friend Marta and I played on the deck. Ah, you've given me an idea, Kirsten. Here is another poem for you, Kirsten. I want you to memorize it instead of the first one I gave you. It's four lines from a long poem about a man who was a sailor all his life. When you spoke of your trip on the eagle, I thought you might like these lines. Can you read them? Swiftly, swiftly flew the ship. Yet she sailed softly too. Sweetly, sweetly blew the breeze on me alone it blew. You read that well, Kirsten. Do you think you could memorize these lines? I'll try. You will try and you will succeed. Remember that, please. Because Kirsten now ate dinner at her Uncle Olaf's house, it was impossible for her to get away in the evenings to meet Singing Bird. On Wednesday morning, 
She managed to leave a young doll for singing bird by the stream. After school, she went to the stream to check. Singing bird left me a blue and white bit of bedwork. I bet it would make a beautiful headband for Sonny. She also drew a full sun in the sand. That means that she wants me to come in the morning to meet her. Oh, but there is never enough time in the morning, what with my chores and getting to school on time. I will have to cross this out to show that I can't meet her then. I hope she isn't upset with me. On Friday, Kirsten decided to recite her poem before she forgot it. Hush, everyone. Kirsten Larson will now recite. Please come forward, Kirsten. You may recite now. With feeling, please. Swiftly, swiftly through the ship. Yet she sailed softly too. Sweetly, sweetly blew the breeze on me alone it blew. You recited very well, Kirsten. You recited with as much feeling as the text-to-speech can muster. I'm proud of you. Now everyone, it is time for reading. Miss Winston, may I fetch the water for our drink? Yes, Kirsten, thank you. As you walk, don't forget to take deep breaths to draw fresh air into your lungs. The weather is starting to turn cold. Singing bird. Hello. Come. But I can't come with you now. I have to go back to school. Come. Maybe I can come after school. No. Come now. We go today. Going, but why? No food. Bad hunting. We go to find food. I know what it feels like to be hungry. I can still remember Peter's cries when there was no bread to eat back in Sweden. Papa's crop failing was why we came here to America. Where will we go? Where sunsets? For buffalo? For deer? You come too. Come, sister. Oh, I would love to live in that warm teepee. We could be free to roam the woods all day and would always be together. But how could I leave my family? Mom and Papa would worry that I got lost or killed. No, I can't come with you. I want to come, but this is my home. I can't leave my home. Singing Bird sadly reached into her pouch and gave her bone needle to Kirsten. Will you ever come back, Singing Bird? If you come back. Oh, please, do come back. I'll be here, right here. You can find me easily. Whistle for me by the stream. If you come back. You've been gone a long time, Kirsten. I thought you'd found that ship in your poem and sailed back to Sweden. Sigh. No, ma'am. I left something for you. It's in your reader. Anna, will you help me again? Yes. Gladly. Gladly. <laughs>